कुछ चाहती हो ओ Father, Mother, God, creator of all things seen and unseen, we rejoice in your presence. We ask and accept that we be elevated out of the mind of this day and the mind of this world and experience presence and that peace that passes all understanding. Let our minds be stilled and made receptive to thy word. Let the great light of Christ move through us. In the name of Christ Jesus and in the presence of our Mother Mary, Glory unto God, glory unto the Christ, glory unto the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to read two verses from the second chapter of Philippians. Beginning with verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So it's that mind that I'd like to talk a little bit about tonight. We know it is the mind of Christ or Christ consciousness. could also be called Krishna consciousness, and has been, same thing. Or the mind of clear light that we find in Buddhist writings. But what does that mean? Okay, so we have If we have the mind of Christ, Christ consciousness, and we know that we're not talking about Jesus in this case, we're talking about the cosmic Christ, the the solar being whose physical body is the sun in the sky that we see, in whom we live and move and have our being, then all of a sudden we are thrown into a a different way of looking at it. So what is this mind? We're living inside this mind. We're living inside this being. We're aware of we're aware of the tiniest microdot of that 
mind. So I have a mind and you have a mind and you have a mind and so on. And we talk about our mind and our conscious mind and our subconscious mind and what constitutes our mind um, and all the garbage that's in our mind and how we want to quiet our mind and so on. But the mind that we talk about is really just the cordoned off portion, the smallest, tiniest cordoned off portion of the one universal mind. This, this is the mind of, of Christ. Whatever we call it. So we don't want to get hung up on religiosity. You know. If we can sign off on the idea that we're living inside of another being, <laughs> and we've had some sense of that, that this stuff that we have that seems to be empty air space between me and you and our bodies and, and all of that. If we can get a sense that there's more to it than that, and we're experiencing that there's more to it than that, and we can see and feel the energy that is present and that manifests itself on uh, different vibrational levels. Um, even here in the room with us now, uh, then we start to see an erosion taking place, a, a fading away of the membrane that we have created that separates our mind from the one mind. And we fill that space, we fill that space with uh, our essence, <laughs> our energy, our vibration, our uh, ideas, our uh, identification, our personality. It just becomes a uh, repository held in, in uh, uh, its orbit as an atmosphere around the planet of our thinking, of our identity. So the Dalai Lama, in his uh, book, uh, The Mind of Clear Light, talks about three times when we can experience the uh, eradication, the dissolution of that membrane when we're no longer captive in that little prison that we've made, filled so intensely with ourselves. One was when we sneeze. One was when we die, and one was, in, was when we have an orgasm. Now, at the very least, we've all sneezed, so we can just concentrate on that one for now. In that moment, there's complete letting go. If you want to know what letting go feels like, analyze that moment when you're just, you know, and, and then finally, oof, out it comes, the sneeze. You, you just let go to it. You couldn't help it. It demanded expression. <laughs> In that moment, that millisecond, you also experience the freedom from your own thinking, the, the universe of your own creation, the prison that you've made of your own mind.
And maybe that's why, you know, a couple hundred years ago or so, they ran around with snuff and tried to make themselves sneeze. I don't know. <laughs> it was fashionable to take a pinch of snuff and sneeze your head off. What a rush. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I do know that that moment is something that we want to probe and discover. So that when we sit and meditate, we can just duplicate, replicate that experience of letting go to that extent without the snuff. And for a longer period than a microsecond. Okay. As we do that, as we start to experience our mind expanding, you know, mind expanding experiences, as we begin to experience that, where that membrane that separates what we think of as our mind from the rest of mind, it's all the same substance, we begin to participate in the experience of creation itself, where we are at all at the same time, one with the creator, the source of all that is, and one with the creation, everything that is, because all that exists in the mind. That mind, the flesh of that mind, the flesh of the mind of Christ, is light. That's what we call light. Okay, the flesh of the mind. And so when we see light within, then we concentrate on it and we open ourselves up so that we can be receptive to it and feel it. Not just, you know, oh, I'm seeing light and I'm pretty special because I can see this, but to actually feel it. We start to feel that, that living presence and intelligence for which it, the light, is the outer covering. Now here's the thing, we can do this ourselves, we can practice, we have, can learn techniques, we can learn to concentrate so that we can place our thoughts on a single topic, place our attention on a single topic and not have it stray immediately. Maybe. It, immediately plus one, <laughs> and then plus two, and so on. But we, we can practice that, and we can learn other techniques once we've gotten some ability to, to concentrate. But no matter what we learn, no matter how adept we get at being able to control the mind in this way, we always are going to come to that same threshold where we are required to let go of our effort. Because our effort, no matter how valuable it was to get us there, is no longer valuable. All that's valuable is our ability and willingness to sneeze, to let go. So 
So, in Philippians, we're being told, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Is that heresy or what? I don't know how they left it in the Bible this long. So what all do we find in this mind of Christ? Well, if we can limit it again to this solar model, the solar system, and we say that the light, now remember the light is the flesh of the mind, that the light coexists with the breadth and width, the extent of the, the solar system. That the entire heliosphere is, is filled, permeated with this, and that it is actually the substance out of which everything is made that is made. And Physics is telling us that now. It's, we don't have to just find it in, in the Bhagavad Gita or in the, the Bible or in the Upanishads or wherever we're looking. We are finding it coming out at us everywhere, the awareness that light is the substance from which all things are made is becoming a, a fact for those who need facts. And so we've referred to it as the connective tissue between the Godhead and creation, between the source and all that is manifest. Connective tissue, it's connected. One with God, the pure potential, and one with everything else, everything that is, that has form of one kind or another. Everything that has vibration, everything that has dimensionality. So that's really big. And it's really connected. And it's the flesh of a mind that's intelligent. And that's the part that so many of us balk at when we start to experience the meditations in a deeper way. We may experience a certain quiet, a certain calm. A peacefulness. We may experience a merging with a broader sense of mind. But we still place ourselves in the center of that equation. And when we have truly done that, when we have truly experienced that mind, we're no longer in the center of the equation. It's not, I am experiencing oneness with God. I am seeing light. I am feeling peaceful. My mind is quiet, right? All, any of those things. We experience ourselves <coughs> 
as God. That that intelligence that's in that mind, the personality of the being that is in that mind, the mind of the Christ, that exists uniformly throughout the solar system. is ours without boundary. And we may get a, the smallest sense of vertigo in that. Because that intelligence, that presence, that mind, that light exists, does exist uniformly and is as aware of a molecule in the middle of the ocean as it is of a mountain as it is of a planet, as it is of the space between planets. And we've heard the term cosmic consciousness bandied about. That's cosmic consciousness. That's an awareness that's permeating a, this broader sphere. Right. And that's what we start to tap into when we have that, that very conscious sneeze of letting go. So as we follow Christ, as we take up the cross of our bodies, take up your cross and follow me, you know, as we take up our cross and follow the Christ on the way, We can say to others, as has been said to us, follow me even as I follow Christ Jesus. As a matter of fact, we say that whether we want to or not. We can't help it. That's what we do. Right? And so we become an environment for others that so spiritually charged that they, in that environment that you are channeling, that you are providing for them, that they can experience and perform their own inner alchemy that brings them to the threshold of self-realization and the discovery of the great light within. So many years ago, here in Portland, I was uh, teaching some uh, classes based on a book that was uh, on spiritual leadership. It was kind of a more mainstream kind of a Christian writing, as I recall, but it was really interesting because he was talking about this calling that we have as if we're going to follow the Christ. Of course, he was talking about it in more religious terms, but and that in so doing, we become, we participate in the spiritual leadership of the Christ, that we become extensions of that. And really what he was talking about was this thing that I'm now saying, that we become an extension of the 
this spiritually charged atmosphere. We're extending that to others so that they can bask in that radiance, not yours, but this thing that comes through you, and that's what allows them to be their best selves, to elevate in all the ways that they need to, to get knocked down a peg or two maybe even in that process. What happens, that's part of it. But listen in that. Right. And I remember one young man took uh, exception with the whole idea of my encouraging them to be spiritual leaders because he thought I was talking about being Gandhi or being, you know, the Buddha or that. <laughs> and how could that's not something that we can decide to do? And who are we anyways? And, you know. But that's not the point, and yet it kind of is, too. I see. We're not say, say, talking about hanging our shingle, you know, guru, here's my hours, <laughs> and here's my list of services, and my price sheet. <laughs> But we certainly are talking about making it real, you know, so, it's a, so that it's real for ourselves, and when it's real for ourselves and it's moving through that, then there's an aura of authenticity that is emanated. Do you know what that feels like, you know? When you meet somebody who's an authentic person, whatever it is, whatever they're authentic in, <laughs> they're the real deal. You know, they're not pretending. There's no pretense. It's not artificial. You know, it's not based on artifice. Okay? It's become part of their flesh and blood, who they are. And those people we're drawn to. Those are the people that impact our lives, whether we've known it or not. They're grade school teachers or, you know, just somebody that we met on the bus. There's something that clicks at a very deep level when we're in the presence of authenticity. And if that authenticity is connected to an authentic, real connection with the divine, then look out, oh, all bets are off. And people will react hugely to that, very strongly to that, one way or the other, I might add. People will be drawn to it or they'll be repelled by it. That's not up to us to worry about. That's what they do. Our job, if we're going to follow Christ, if we're going to take this on, is to make it real for ourselves. And we do that by disengaging from this little pea mind, the pea brain mind, that we've identified with and called home. Okay.